Hey, it's Greg Otten here at MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd do something a little bit different this evening. I'm, I'm mowing my lawn. And, uh, I'm not a huge fan of lawns, but you know, if you've got a property and you want to pay, maintain your property value, you got to maintain your lawn and it's uh, Monday night after a long day at work and I got to mow my lawn. So I've done all that and now I got to do the the weed whacking, the edging. And uh, tell you something, something happened a number of years ago where uh, I was uh, re replacing the, uh, you know, the, the whatever the tr trimming line on my weed whacker, and uh, I lost part of the assembly. Uh, the screw fell out, and it fell into my grass. Uh, I guess if you're taking that apart, never do it over your grass. Um, Anyway, I never found the components again, and so the weed whacker was basically missing a key part. Would not work without that assembly, you know. And, and uh, we've all struggled with uh, people with lawns who own weed whackers uh, struggle with that little thing that goes underneath that loosens in some way and tightens in some way, and uh, that whole thing just became unusable for me. And I looked into replacing it, and it was almost just as expensive as the original Weed Whacker. And I got this baby, uh, this is a cheap MTD Weed Whacker that I got, one of the best years of my life, 2004, the year I got married, to my beautiful wife. And so this Weed Whacker's with me, been with me ever since then. Now, $89 at a hardware store, cheap Weed Whacker, it's still running, two-stroke. So when that happened, I thought, I wonder if there's some way I can just hack this thing and make it work anyway. And I just, I'm so cost averse, uh, I just kept staring at it and trying to think of a way. And the most simple solution just dawned on me. And I don't know if there's other YouTube videos on this. Uh, I don't have the time to do a an extensive survey to see if uh, that's the case. But this solution to that problem was so simple. Not only that, but if you struggle with your weed whacker and adjusting the length of it, it's not that complicated, but if you do, this actually is a simple solution. So uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and show you how I deal with this, how I dealt with having that whole assembly gone. And of course, not every weed whacker is the same, so this may not work for you. But this is how I dealt with it, and I think you'll find it very interesting. I find it very effective. All Every time I use my weed whacker, I replace the string, it takes about a minute, and I can do my whole property. And I've got a fairly si a sizable property. It's not the area of your property that determines how much weed whacking you need to do. It's the number of edges and borders and things like that. The distance of edges and borders. And uh, because I've got a lot of different features on my lawn, you know, a fire pit and this edge and that edge and this kid's thing and that kid's thing and all these. Uh, it actually, you know, it's aside from being a fairly large lawn, uh, there's a lot of edges, a lot of edging to do. And I find with when I replace the string, I get about one lawn edging out of that, but it only takes a minute, so uh, it's fine. So uh, stay with me, come in close, and have a look here. Okay, so here's the um, sort of arbor I guess for lack of a better term the arbor you know the the axle around which the thing spins I don't know what the technical term and, and weed whacking terminology is but as an angler I'd call this the arbor the center of the spinny thing so just to show you how easy this is to remove you just you know you have a set of pliers and uh, just loosen it up a bit by forcing the string back pops out just clean this off a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so you've got this sort of, it's like a cup, right? And you've got this, you've got this arbor here in the center, right? like an axle, a pole. I call it an arbor because it looks, it looks like a fishing reel. And that's, that's the arbor, the center. Uh, anyway, you, you've got a hole on either side, right? You've got a hole on this side. And you got a hole on this side. So all you got to do, you get a piece of string about, I don't know, 20 inches long. Basically, it would go from your, you know, the end of your thumb to your, uh, 
just measure it out from the from the end of your thumb to the end of your forearm, about that long is about the length you need. Give or take. Right. And then you, you put it through the hole. Put it around the arbor and tie a simple overhand knot. Right? Just an overhand knot like that. And then put it put it through the other side. And just mend the knot until zoom this back out a bit. Whoops, other way. Right. So either end is about the length you want. Right. Uh, most of these things have a, a piece of metal here that'll cut it off if it's too long. I've, I've gotten, I've gone a bit short here. Right. It should have been maybe a little bit longer. You can see that this end is a little bit longer than this end. Uh, I'm going to take a quarter inch off of here because both ends should be about the same length, so it'll run properly. Anyway, just do that and. Give it a good tighten. Now, it won't go anywhere while you're running it. So, I mean, I'm I'm showing you how to do this on camera, so it's taking me longer than normal. But this this would normally take about 30 seconds, and that's that's all you need to do to replace a string on one of these. Um, if either a you've lost your entire assembly <laughs> because you dropped the nut that holds it all. There's a nut that went in the end here, and I dropped that and lost it years ago. Um, or you're just tired of messing with it because <laughs> this is a lot easier uh, and you know it, it basically works until this you know once the string you know it, it's going to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and once it's about this long on either end it becomes kind of useless and you just throw that piece away um, so you know you probably don't get as much out of it you know like as much use out of the string but I mean I bought this 2011 and uh, I don't know <laughs> it's still going. I've got plenty of string left. But it's going to last a long time. That's all you got to do. All the sem, <laughs> all the guts are missing, and I'm sure there's people in the world that have <laughs> figured this out. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. I don't think I'm particularly smart. But anyway, uh, when I go to the uh, hardware store, they have all kinds of things you can stick in here to solve this problem. And all, all you have to do is tie a knot. And, you know, it takes me about, I don't know, 15 minutes to a weed whack here. I got a lot of rocks and things like that, so it wears down fairly quickly. Um, so I get one use out of it, but that's doing a fair amount of uh, stuff against things that, that wear it down quickly, like rocks and concrete and stone. So depending on your property, you might, you might get multiple uses out of one of these. But, you know, I can str string one of these up in, in seconds. Well, since I'm on camera, let's, let's fire this baby up. Let's just see how she runs. I guess for those that are intimidated by two-stroke engines, this is what they call a two-stroke engine. You have to mix the uh, gasoline with uh, a, kind of, a special kind of oil. I think at a ratio of about 50 to 1 in this particular case. No, 40 to 1. Um, it's just a little bit of high school math. And most of these have uh, sort of a three-stage. I mean, the reason these things are so cheap is that you have to do all the thinking. The choke has three different settings. A, B, full choke, half choke, and, no t and open. So you have to uh, basically put it on the setting A and pull it a few times so it makes a, a sound like it's catching. And then you put it on B until it catches really good. And then uh, after it's running properly, you set it to C. So I'm going to do that right now for anyone that's uh, intimidated by this sort of thing, has been using an electric for years. You know, maybe they do have good, maybe a lithium ion battery uh, weed whacker is good, but I haven't bought one in years. So uh, I initially bought an electric one when I bought my first house and I found it so wimpy. Uh, this thing will go through just about anything and it's lasted for years and it doesn't really use that much gas You know fill this thing up and it almost lasts a season. It maybe probably uses a couple tablespoons per use so uh, uh, You know burning gasoline fossil fuels is never really great a great thing 
but uh, you spend 89 bucks and it lasts a good, you know, <laughs> the cheapest thing you can buy. Sorry, I said MTD, it's Yard Machines, which it's probably made by MTD. Anyway, it's a cheap, super cheap uh, weed whacker. It cost me 89 bucks back in 2004. Anyway, here we go. Setting A, and you got this little pump primer thing. You pump this uh, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first time you start it, first time of the year, you might want to do it about eight times. And you just pull it till you feel it catch a bit. Yeah, see it caught? Now I'm going to set it to setting B, sort of like the half choke. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll pull it until it goes, and then I'll just mess with the accelerator, this little trigger thing, until it feels like it's running properly. It's really running great. You'll see, if you, if you pull the thing all the way down, it'll cut out. you got to just keep pumping it and pumping it and pumping it until it just runs full out. So let's watch. Okay, close. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha!